Howdy folks, Pilgrim here, and I've got my little visitor here with me. He's my little, like my little son. Oh, come here. <laughs> come here, baby. This is Stinky. <laughs> he wants to play. Yeah. Look at this now. That's my little baby cat, okay? He's a good boy. He's a little bored. So anyway, um, first, first things first. Uh, okay. <laughs> He's like, I don't have enough of that. Down to get baby. In January of this year, uh, I was given a vision of being inside those camps. I was inside the camp in this dream and I was sitting on some steps and I was looking around at all these other believers and I didn't know them, but they were just being gathered together from all, you know, all over the place, all the surrounding towns where I were and some of the surrounding states. And we all knew that unbelievers were being sifted out and let go. We knew what was coming. It hadn't come yet. And um, I was just wishing I could get out of there. And, uh, and you know, I was, I was afraid. <sighs> the purpose of this, video, of this video isn't to create fear. I'm just saying what I saw, okay? And uh, that I do believe this, these things are coming. This is coming. But we knew, all of us knew, that there was a sifting period going on. And we were just waiting. You know, and um, um, we do have hope for the future. You know, purify yourselves now more than ever before because all the things that are happening in 2014, especially since the final set of blood moons started taking place in April of this year of 2014, the, the last, the third set of tetrads, the third set of blood moons, the first blood moons. Following 1948, boom, the country, Israel, was re-established for the first time in human history. The second set of tetrads, 1967, boom, Jerusalem was recaptured, the center of the country. Uh, the third set of tetrads, 2014 to 15, boom, again it surrounds Israel. Israel is now ready to build the third temple to go inside Jerusalem. The center of the world is Israel. The center of Israel is Jerusalem. The center of Jerusalem is the temple. Now a lot of people are, are focusing on the rapture and that's all they're focusing on and I think that's a mistake. Being ready is one thing but you know what what are we supposed to be doing here in the meantime? Not spending all of our times just hooked on that one thought. Hooked on it like there's nothing else. When Jesus comes back, he's going to be looking to see how we spent our time, to see how we used our time. You understand? Some people are so rapture focused that they're not reaching unbelievers at all. They're hoping the unbelievers will notice them instead of going out and finding them and, and trying to bring them to Christ. We're all guilty of that to some degree, but it's a warning. And, um, you know, the, and there's infighting going on between different parts of the body of Christ and so on. When in fact, the enemy, and I want to talk about this, by the way, at some point in the future in a different video, there's some fascinating things to show you about this. Um, when the enemy is not making any distinguishing, any, uh, you know, discernment between one part of the body of Christ or another, it sees us as we should be seeing ourselves. It sees us as one body, all to be destroyed. Meanwhile, we're too busy being opposed to each other. Oh, I don't mix with the Pentecostals. Oh, I don't mix with the Baptists. Oh, I don't know, Messianics got this wrong and that wrong and, and arguing over theology and being divided against one another, when instead we should be standing together against an enemy who wants to clean us all out. We are told that the body of Christ is the third holy temple. The third temple they build in Jerusalem won't be holy. 
In fact, it'll be a half temple for the amount of ground it covers. Time, times, and half a time. Christ Messiah will build the third physical temple when he arrives in the kingdom, I believe. Could be wrong on that. I've been fairly quiet over the last few months and uh, weeks, and, and I'm not going to blame it all on my friend Bob's death, but since he died, and he was very much a part of me, um, I just wanted to withdraw and retreat, and, uh, and I did so, and, and maybe that wasn't the right thing to do. I don't know. I find myself slowly coming back, but, you know, Bob dying was a shock to the system, and I just keep your eyes on the times. We're there. We are there. The kingdom of God is coming, and every day that passes, we have another day to draw closer to him as never before. He loves us. He loves you with all our hearts, and in my last video, I believe, I showed you how he had I showed you effectively proof of how he had your name written on his heart, written on his hands before the founding of the world. I showed you that from Genesis. God bless. Perhaps we'll see each other soon. Howdy folks, Pilgrim here. Folks, I want to present here the, the second of the two vision streams, whatever you want to call them, uh, that occurred in January of 2014. Uh, actually, this one occurred specifically on the 27th of January, 2014. Um, and it's very simple, but it's very short, but it was so succinct, it was so clear, um, that, I mean, it was so sharp, that it was really um, like what I've touched on before in other videos, the difference between an ordinary dream and the difference when you feel like you're being shown something very specifically. And uh, in this one, I was outside of my house and I was bartering with somebody over my car and I was trying to sell them my car for a bale of wheat, which for my entire family would probably be about a day's wages. But anyway, um, I was trying to sell them my car. And, uh, and and the urgency of these kinds of things, um, I'm seeing more and more people come out with the same visions and so on. I'm seeing a lot of YouTube teachers. I've always banged on about the rapture madness. It's not wrong to wait for the rapture, to long for it. Why, are, why not? After all, it is something that has been promised. But we don't know when it will come. And some people are so fixated on that, that that's where the madness takes over, almost a hysteria in some ways, and they become effectively no earthly good, although only God is truly the judge of that. Um, and that he will be the judge of when he returns, as it says in Matthew 25, I think. Um, how blessed is that servant upon his master's return, whom his master finds doing the work of the Father. The work of the Father. Um, that decision is Jesus Christ's alone. But I say with concern the amount of um, focus that I find on that. It's good to wait for that and to long for that, because God promised it. God has promised a lot of things, but we we don't overfocus on all of them, but people overfocus on this one, and I believe it can be dangerous for us to do so. Overfocus. I didn't say it's dangerous to focus on it, I said it's dangerous to overfocus on it. Now I'm going to tell you why. One good reason why, right? Just off the top of my head. Uh, my wife and I, when we were um, celebrating our wedding anniversary, uh, anniversary, we went to another part of the state. And there we stayed in a, in a hotel run by a couple of European Christians. And speaking to those European Christians, I remembered something, that European Christians at large have never heard of the rapture. They don't know anything about it. Now rather than finding fault with the churches over there for that, I find a cause for the positive, a cause to praise them for it. Because without that in their minds, 
they are still prepared to sacrifice all for Christ. Now think about that. Over here in the West, people are so hooked on the rapture that if it doesn't happen when they expect it to happen, you, see, you understand? You see the picture? Their faith can be stumbled. Some of these TV, some of these TV, yeah, and those guys too, but some of these um, YouTube preachers and teachers are not prophesying, they're questioning some of those same teachers were questioning whether it could come in 2013. They were doing the same in 2012, in 2011, 29, 2008. You see, every time something happens, up comes this questioning. And, you know, it's... Persecution hasn't even come here to the United States yet. It's about to. But what happens when it does? and the rapture hasn't come, if it happens that way. And I suggest there's a strong possibility of that. In all the videos that I've made before, where I've, you know, read good scriptural lessons from the Kumash, it has been said over and over and over again that it is not fit for the righteous to depend on miracles. We must act as if those miracles weren't going to come. So that when they do come, it adds more glory to God anyway. But at the same time, we don't lose our focus on doing what the Father's will is. Matthew 25. We find a backup to that verse where Jesus says, You do not know the day or the hour. And then people take that phrase, run with it, and say, Yes, we do know the day or the hour, contradicting Jesus. And saying, the phrase that Jesus used means the Feast of Tabernacles, or the Feast of this, or the Feast of that. He can't win for losing, can he? I mean, seriously, Jesus Christ cannot win for losing. He said, you don't know. <sighs> That's over focus. When persecution, if it comes first, and it most likely will, how many people were depending so dependent on miracles taking place first, how many of their, those people's faith would be stumbled? Remember the European Christians. They've never heard of it. But they know their father, and they know the voice of their father who called them. They've never heard of it, and yet they're prepared to follow him wherever he leads them. Without this great picture being held in front of them of what might happen. You know, to save them from that. Think about the Chinese a couple of years ago. Millions of Christians were murdered. Their whole worldview was shaped by the country around them. They're a huge country, China. They must have thought the tribulation was upon them. But it wasn't the tribulation. It was a tribulation. A tribulation. Chairman Mao murdered 135 million of his own people. You know, they, it was only a tribulation. So, I think it's maybe ridiculous to expect that persecution won't come here. The only untested nation on earth in the United States, which just happens to be the most corrupt church on earth. Now come on, I'm not, I'm not saying this to, to unsettle you, I'm, I'm asking you to make sure of the foundation upon which you stand, in view of his words that no man knows the day or the hour. He wasn't giving us a clue, he was saying a statement, lest he should be a liar. No man knows the day or the hour. Anyway, a lot of things may have to happen first before the things that we know are coming are coming. I don't know. I don't know. But hold on to your faith. Hold on. To what you have with Jesus Christ and let him lead you through and you will see miracles I mean small things from day to day to 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 you know to year to year I mean you'll see him active in your life if you put true faith in him not conditional faith <sighs>